I need some energy. I need you to praise the Lord. You're here for a reason. You're not here to just sit here and, and not praise God for what he has done in your life. I'm here, and I just want to say quickly because of Pastor Joe. One of my goals, 2023, I want to preach, Lord. Started off the year, don't know why. I wasn't in the word, wasn't coming to church. But God said, you're preaching this year. Right? So I said, wow. So I go to my, a job of mine, and everybody's talking about their goals for the year, making more money, doing this and that. Willie, what's your goal? I want to preach this year. Oh. The bad part? I didn't know you were a Christian. Right? So I just want to point that out, that some people don't know that you're a Christian. And that's wrong. So I want you to pray about that. As I was preparing for this message, right, he asked me to come two weeks ago. He said, you have to decide by this date. I go through it. Lord, I'm not good enough. Lord, I don't know the word like that. I don't have a, a degree in preaching. Lord, I don't know how to even read that well. What am I going to say? What am I going to do? So I start listening to the word. What happens with me whenever I speak about God the week before, I try to be perfect. Patient with my kids. Patient with my wife. Don't speak up. Shut up. Walk away. I try to be, read the word. Listen to this message. Listen to that message. Right? And that's something I've done for years. Whenever I have to speak about God, I want to be in his holy place. Right? I want to be a true Christian at that moment. Right? Once I walk out this door today, who knows? But for this week, I'm going to try to be the best Christian I can be. So with all the discouragement happening around me, and again, this is just in my head, I start listening to messages. And one of them, uh, James McDonald, he speaks about courage. Many great men in the Bible failed adultery, murder. But who were they to us? They are our, our biggest encouragers. Right? They turn to God and become something more powerful than we can even imagine. By using our words, trusting the Lord, right? It's not our own, but it's through God that we get to where we are. So that encouraged me. Then the next thing you know, people text me. Oh, I heard you're pre uh, preaching. I'm excited for you. My biggest encourager, my wife. She says, which, oh, oh. she says, when I'm serving the Lord, I'm a completely different man. She, she, she says, she's willing to do anything because she sees you are serving the Lord and you are the total opposite of the person you are. So I want to encourage you. <laughs> If you're a Christian, ask your spouse, ask your kids, ask whoever you're close with how you are, and do you reflect Christ? At this time, I would like my brother Benjamin to come read up the word. Thank you. Good afternoon. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Benjamin, and we have another Benjamin over there. <laughs> Don't confuse me. I'm the handsome Benjamin. He's the elder guy. <laughs> and I'm the blind Benjamin. <laughs> okay, this is the word of God. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact, you are doing. Now we ask brothers and sisters to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who admonish you. God is warning you. 
Hold them in the highest regard and love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive. Encourage the disheartened. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong with the wrong. But always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Like my sister here was saying before, continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And that is the word of God. I'm, be before, I'm here before you to encourage you. I don't know if you're aware, there's a couple of commandments, love thy neighbor, but then there's the, ne the next step is to encourage one another. I know some of us are loners, right? We like to go to church right after we're home. Some of us are outgoing and we like to be around people, right? But in the Bible, it's very important, it says, to encourage one another. You need that one great friend that's going to be there. So when you're struggling with sin, whatever it is, you know what it is, you're able to speak to that person and say you're wrong, whatever it is. Or you can sometimes encourage and say you're right. You did a great job there. You, you stood up for the right thing. So I, I want to give you the definitions of encouragement according to the Bible, is to build one up, right? You want to give somebody confidence. So this week, again, as I was destroying myself, <laughs> finding a reason not to be here, I had people around me, Sister Lorna, Sister Lorna always, when are you going to preach? When are you going to preach? When are you going to preach? Right? She gives me that encouragement all the time, right? And I, I don't know why, right? Even Pastor Joe, people are excited, and I'm like, wow, Lord, not me. Not Willie Vega from the Bronx, right? But I'm not special. We're all from the Bronx, some of us, right? And we can do powerful things. Why? Because we're from the Bronx. We're confident, right? We ain't scared of nothing. We ain't scared of nothing. We've been there. We've done that. Come on. Give me something harder. Remember that. But you, that's the way you should be with the Lord. Be confident. I'm a Christian. I praise the Lord. Right? I follow a, a graceful, loving God who forgave me. Bold. Evil, bold. If you, if you could be in the world bold, be bold. And that makes me think of Sister Teresa. She's not here today. But I remember her saying, when I first became a Christian, if you used to go to the club, hair done, nails done, Dressed, right? Why do you come to worship the Lord in pajamas? Right? That encouraged me. That encouraged me to be like, whoa. Whoa, she was right. So, so the point I'm trying to make is that you have to get, you're going to hear encouragement from others, but you also have to encourage. Okay? Hebrews 3.13. But encourage one another as long as it is called today. Why today? Because everybody knows tomorrow's not promised. Right? So you got to encourage people today because you don't know if you'll see that person again. Okay? So that none of you may be hardened by sin's defeatfulness. So this is where you got to get involved. Right? Our Tuesday night classes, whatever engagement, whatever fellowship is happening, if you don't surround yourselves with people from the word, you're going to fall. There's potentialness, right? I have a story where I was out of character, and one of my good friends, what he did, he said, we, we got to do dinner. I'm like, dinner? We never do dinner, right? He takes me to dinner, and he says, you failed. And I said, what? I knew I was wrong. But to hear it from somebody else, 
is different. Right? So I knew you failed. And this is what you need to do to fix it. Right? So this was a friend that I trusted. He's one of my brothers. And he was able to say that, and I was able to accept that. So you need to have that one person. I always say that. It doesn't have to be a lot. Just, just one who could correct you in those times of need. And again, sometimes it's not even correction. It's just comfort. You lost somebody. You just want somebody to be there with you. And I just, this, was, this blew my mind when I, when I read this. Even Jesus, who we're supposed to follow, needed encouragement. He went through a season where he, and I don't know if everybody knows this story, where he doubted, Lord, his father, do you want me to do this? I don't want to do this. I don't want to die for people's sins. Why? This could be easier. Why do I have to suffer? Matthew 26, 36 through 38. Sorry, I'm old, so I got to take my glasses off. Then Jesus went in with his disciples. How many did he have? What was that? To a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took three. He had 12. He took three. He took Peter and two sons of Jebedi, Jebedi along with him. And he began to sorrowfully and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. So even Jesus during his time needed encouragement. If Jesus needs encouragement, what do you think you need? So I encourage you, find the one. Two, join a group, but you, it's steps that you need to take to be encouraged and to also encourage others. So I'm going to give you quickly a few ways to show encouragement, okay? Very simple. Like I always tell, I'm, I'm also a coach, so I'm always telling my kids, it's practice, practice. You're not going to leave here and pick this up right away, Right? You need practice. So number one, you can call somebody. Somebody passes away, you know somebody's going through something, you know somebody lost a job. It's rare that you get a phone call nowadays. Out of my group of friends, I get one birthday call a year. One. That's including my kids. Isn't that crazy? Today's world, it works. You could text somebody. I have a brother I haven't seen in 15 years, still. Thinking of you and the family, you know God is good, right? I get that every month from this person that I haven't seen in 15 years. It keeps me going. Like, oh man, I gotta get back in it, right? So texting is important in today's world. Send an email, right? Send an email you could express. I talked about this in the past, when me and my wife first started, we used to argue. We couldn't talk face to face, so we would send an email to each other. <laughs> right? You get it all out. <laughs> right? But it's not face to face, and that's the way we communicate it. So I was able to read it, take my 10 seconds, really relax, respond. Right? That's another way. Another way to encourage you. Wow, you look nice today. Right? A compliment. Free. Oh, that's a great outfit. I like those sneakers. Oh, thanks, I see, you know? Confidence, you're giving somebody confidence, you, you're making somebody bold. One of the biggest things, is my brother here? He's not here today. One of the things I always, I always taught was, you pray for somebody. You don't say, hey, I'll keep you in my prayer. No, come here, pray right now, brother. Right now, right now. What's your need, what, what are you going through? Right, but you gotta be built up to do that. So you want to be bold in Christ. It's not you. It's not me, Willie from the Bronx. No, it's Willie Christ from the Bronx. So keep that in mind. Sometimes you can fulfill a need. 
right? I broke my arm. Can't clean my house. I can't clean my dishes. I can't go grocery shopping, right? You want to Don't worry about it. I got you. You don't have to go crazy, but God is going to impart in you what you need to fulfill that need. Um, the example of Jesus right now, time. Sometimes you, you don't even have to say a word. There's times my wife, she speaks to her family, she walks in the room. Just, can you just be right there for me? Don't fix it. I'm not asking you to fix it. Just, I just want to feel your presence. Right? If it's really bad, can you pray? Right? So that's, that's encouraging somebody. It's knowing that it's God. It's, it's not you. One of the biggest ones was saying, I love you. We met a lot of new people that uh, they never heard their mother or father say, I love you. Just saying that, I love you. I love you. Right? There's so, so many ways of saying it. But it, mean, it just does something sometimes to people's hearts and spirits, right? How can you show that you're a Christian the most? By loving somebody, loving one another. Sometimes it's just being a crying arm, right? Somebody just needs to let it out. As I've gotten older, I've been crying a lot. I'm, I'm the most emotional Bronx person in the world. It's crazy, right? But that's, that's not me. And I know that's God. Why? He's breaking down that, that pride, my cheese mold. Get out of here. Get out of here, right? So I could be open to people. And what encouraged me the most about crying, I think I started crying when I heard a sermon about Jesus wept. Right? We're supposed to image. The image is Jesus. Jesus wept? I could. Why? Why can't I cry? Jesus wept. So keep that in mind that Jesus wept. A lot of these things, when he became physical and came to, to hear for us, he, he went through a lot of things we go through. He just didn't sin. So keep that in mind. Another one is so many. Pass on information is encouraging. So one day I was here at church. I overheard a brother saying he was looking for a job. I didn't know this brother, but I just heard somebody else say they're looking to hire people, right? So I'm not being nosy. It's just I heard they're looking to hire. I need a job. So I go, wait, I don't know the brother's names. But brother, come here. He's looking for a job. I just heard you. A few months later, brother come up to me. Oh, thank you. I'm like, oh, you know, thank you for what? Oh, I'm working for that company. It's been four months. Right? That's encouragement. That's, that's, whoa. So you, sometimes you just got to pass on information. It's, it's nothing holy. It's nothing holy here. So listen to the word. Listen to your heart. Be obedient to the Lord. And then the last one I want to leave you with is another situation. Be patient. That's encouraging. I don't know if my wife remembers this, but when I first became a Christian, I had a disagreement with one of the brothers from church. And I lost it. I was ready to fight. I was, whoo, the Bronx came out of me. Right? I'm a baby Christian. He was bigger than me, wider than me. And you know what he did? Relax. Calm down. Pray. Pray. He didn't come at me like, get out of here, shorty, right? Easy. <laughs> Easy, right? Right? He was a deacon. And I got checked more by his patience by anything else. Not a threat, not violence, it's just relax. 
So showing patience is encouraging to others. Okay? Keep this in mind. Pray about it. Again, if you're good at it, great. Teach somebody. If you're not, practice. Practice at home. Practice with your kids. I encourage my kids every day. Every day. I do all the things I do. I'm up here because of my kids. I want to encourage them to follow God, to trust the Lord, to do mighty things that I never thought I could do. So keep that in mind. Those who are praying about school, trust the Lord that he will provide. For those who are struggling in their marriage, trust the Lord and he will heal your marriage. For those who are going through health problems, pray to the Lord. Trust the Lord that he will heal you, that he will send the right doctors. If you're going to negativity, if you're going to depression, pray to the Lord. Lift it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord, all of it. Whatever you're going through right now, I want you to know the Lord is with you. Trust the Lord. Don't think it's not going to happen. Don't be discouraged by the world or your own mindset or your parents or whatever was said to you as a child. Let it go. Ask the Lord to forgive whoever that is. But I'm encouraging you whether you're a believer or not. Trust in the Lord. And I saved my last encouragement for my brother, Justin. I've seen Justin since he came into the church. And every time I see (laughs) the Justin I saw back in the day, the pictures, the videos, When I see Justin here, praising the Lord. When I see Justin here, praising the Lord and preaching about God, I'm I'm like, whoa, whoa. I get so crazy. I'm like, oh, my God. Well, I'm ready to, oh, I want to do a mixtape preaching. Like, I'm like, we're about to pass the mic. But I get it. I get so energized. When I'm ready to preach, it's like, there's a feeling you can't even explain. But this brother right here, oof, I love it. I mean, it's, it's whole family. I just want to leave you with that, man. You got to be watched so you could be blessed, but you also got to bless others. It's, it's, it's part of the commandments. Thank you in the name of Jesus.